today, we're going to get into Laura Bass and her misconception of the manosphere. Laura Bass is an English feminist writer from Oxford, England, and is the founder of the Everyday Sexism Project. Bates attended King's College, St. John College, Cambridge, and graduated from the University of Cambridge in 2007. Laura Bates' most recent book titled Men Who Hate Women From Incels to Pickup Artists and How It Affects Us All is supposedly a comprehensive undercover look at the terrorist movement no one talks about. Right here is where she maligned the manosphere as being parallel to that of a hate group. Secondly, within the introduction of her book, she proceeds in stating that masculinity is never vilified. In other words, it is never truly ridiculed by the world at large. In her book, she expressed, end quote, If we talk about masculinity, patriarchy, or male privilege, the conversation is immediately derailed by accusations of generalization and prejudice. Not all men rise to ubiquitous crime. What Laura Bass failed to realize along with some members of the worldwide manosphere is that we live in a gynocentric world, which means that societies are more focused on feminist ideals and perspectives. This really applies to the Western Hemisphere. The patriarchy have been non-existent for over 2,000 years. We no longer live in a patriarchy, nor do we live in a gynocracy. There are some men in the manosphere that espouse the notion that we live in a matriarchy. This isn't true as women as a collective don't have rulership over our government. This may apply to some countries around the world, but not for all. Some may argue that the patriarchy is still in practice due to the fact that men are still predominantly in social, political, and economic roles. I feel like the social climate is way different now, although men still hold these positions. Patriarchy as an ideology is no longer endorsed due to the fact that today it is generally perceived as oppressive, especially towards women. We live under conditions that benefit women because this is what provides stability for womankind. Bates also goes into detail of how men in the manosphere prey on her and her family. She stated, end quote, Why are these men so angry? Why do they hate so much? Because I started a little website called Sexism Project through which people of any gender can talk about their experiences of sexism and inequality. I asked people to share their stories and I gave them a space to do so. And that innocuous simple act in 2012 was enough to unleash a torrent of abuse that continues to this day, spiking and redoubled every time I talk about the project online or in the media. It follows me to speaking events where angry men hand out flyers calling me a liar or into the bookstores where they leave handwritten notes in my books warning readers that women lie about rape. It trails me from television studios when men have seen me on the news so I arrive home and open my laptop to find messages about using my hair as handlebars and raping me until I die. Long descriptions about being abused and violated, messages about my hypothetical future children being raped, notes about destroying my genitals and vagina. Videos depict me as the devil, fantastical rants about my partner and threats to harm my family, graphic details of how they would track me down using pieces of furniture, and filmed themselves raping me, end quote. Bates went to extreme measures into describing the nature of the men in the manosphere. In my personal opinion, this is more of a matter concerning her subjectivity of their personalities. This was blown way out of proportion. Ironically, as long as I've been in the manosphere, which was for three years, I haven't heard about her from any authority in this space yet. She just released the book last year. I personally feel like she's targeting the manosphere because it's a popular niche market, and it is a narrative that militant feminists promote concerning men. Men in this space, for the most part, aren't a part of any conspiracy, especially those she've just mentioned. This is just her imagination. Another point that stuck out to me within the first chapter is how she lumped the incel community with the manosphere. The black pill incel community is a separate entity. A lot of incels will come across material in the manosphere, but choose to resign out of the sexual marketplace completely. She also mentioned that hundreds of thousands of men affiliated with the red pill despises women to the point that many of them believe that all women should be exterminated. This is another falsity as men in this space are concerned with helping men out of anything resolve their dating issues and other related problems associated with their masculinity. It is pretty extreme to come to that conclusion when none of the topics discussed in the manosphere are vice-like like that. Some feminists blew things way out of proportion, especially concerning men, because this is the general narrative that they've created. 
Feminists have a general belief that we live in a patriarchy and masculinity itself have symptoms of aggression and hostility. I'm going to cover more details in another part. Until then, next time.